discussion resolution to accept the proposed amendments to the Enfield Town Code, Chapter 22, Article 2, Enfield Culture and Arts Commission Ordinance. Uh, to approve the amendment uh, to Section 22-34B of the ordinance, creating a liaison board member appointed by the Board of Education. And once again, uh, that there is no appointment to the arts and culture for this, and they're still reorganizing. However, um, that is the resolution. So moved. Uh, Councillor Despard. Second. Second, Councillor Santanella. Any discussion on this? Councillor Pisner. Okay, so, so we heard tonight that it looks like this commission is just a hot mess. So we have to ask ourselves, I have to ask myself, we have three members that are left on it. Before we make any changes to the bylaws, to me, we have to find out what really is going to be expected on this. I mean, what is going to be the yearly budget? How many events are they going to have? I, I can't, I don't understand why we're moving forward with changing something when this commission has literally fallen apart. And to the best of my knowledge, none of them have even gotten an apology for being mistreated, in my opinion. So it's a no from me tonight. Councilor Ungar. Okay, I've been talking about this for a while, and I am on this committee as a liaison. And personally, I don't think we need another non-voting member on this committee. Um, I think uh, Councilor Santanella and Jason Neely and I need to meet and have a discussion on how we're going to move forward. Um, and in light of the information that we even learned tonight, that before many of these residents uh, left the group, they voted and they didn't want it. The majority didn't want a Board of Ed liaison appointed to this group. Um, and I did speak with Superintendent Dresick at length, and he said we don't need a Board of Ed liaison to this group. That all we need to do is to, I can just give them a call and just say, this is what I'd like to do. Can Would the school be interested in this? And he said, just call me anytime and we'll, we'll set up a meeting and discuss it. Um, he said, if, if you want to, if you have to, it's another meeting that they have to go to, um, but you don't need it. So um, Dresic said we don't need it. I don't think we do. Uh, the committee itself doesn't want it. So I, I'm not gonna support this. Councilor Ludwig. So, so curious, curious, just I'd like to hear your side of the story and sort of the beef between the for, former or current committee members and yourself that seem that, that the individual came up and talk. Just curious on what sort of the disconnect here is with this committee. And before we do anything else to it, why wouldn't we invite them to a meeting to the council, uh, have it a 630 to, you know, a special guest to sort of work this out? So I'm just curious, I, I want to make sure you have a chance to sort of give your side of the story, because again, they've been pretty clear that they haven't, assuming they've had some issues with some of the things you folks have been kind of going back and forth with. And I've seen some of the emails. And I have to admit, I'm concerned at some of the costs that's being thrown out for murals, first of all, which, yeah, I think is, you know, then the question is whether we even, that's a whole other story, you know, that, that I, I don't know if that's part of the beef, but I, I mean, I think the public needs to understand this. And a lot of these people have served on this committee for a number of years. So I'm just curious, why don't we sort of try to, again, use some kid gloves here and mend some fences? Excuse, Mr. Mayor, excuse me, can I interrupt? And if you don't mind, tell me. Uh, I, I asked the question to her. Then you, you're um, more than welcome to answer after she. Okay, that's um, fine, Mike. No, Hold on. No, that's I'm just fine. saying there's been back and forth and just giving her a chance, chance to, yeah. So I think when I started here, the I, I did do a tour of a lot of commissions and looked to see if I could um, understand pieces of it. I will say that the purpose of this particular commission is to plan, produce, coordinate, or otherwise provide assistance to sponsors of events or activities and to encourage participation therein, which promote or develop the artistic, historic, cultural, and heritage resources of and within the community of Enfield. And when asked how that mission was being fulfilled, there wasn't a lot of um, data or, or events, and COVID was obviously a major factor. So we did have some conversations about the appropriate use of 
taxpayer dollars in terms of the budget, and they did not really agree with some of the ideas that were put forth, and, and I did not agree that meditation arts or culinary arts was part of of a mission. Uh, we talked about why Enfield is one of the only communities that doesn't have a summer concert series or why there appear to be monies from taxpayer funds spent to sponsor other events and things like that, looking for clarification. Um, my other concern was during a very tight budget process that this commission at one point had over $50,000 that had been rolled over year to year and at this point in time had $30,000 with no plan. Murals was brought up by multiple people, including some newer people on the commission. Murals are a very effective way of um, creating synergy within a community, within a, a special area. Uh, we have a property owner in Thompsonville who's interested in one, which would be in conjunction with the location uh, of people coming out of the train platform. So there was a conversation about investigating whether that was something that would be appropriate. Um, the $30,000, however, uh, is an issue. It's an issue for you as fiduciary agents of the town and that from an audit perspective, you're having money that's rolled over year to year and not used, but is being taxed. So I had asked what the plan was. There was no plan. And so one of my suggestions, which you accepted, was to take those funds to reallocate them within the budget process to reduce the burden on something else that wouldn't have to be cut. And I think that that was the right decision that you made. Their budget was maintained at the level that they've had for the past several years. And in addition to that, they kept an additional, I think it was $5,000 and change from their surplus. So we just took a flat amount. They had 35,000 and change. We took 30, they kept five in reserve, and they got their full funding for their budget. At this point, it is my understanding that Councilman Santanella and Councilwoman Ungar are actually calling names because there is interest in coming on. The resignations resignations that happened in June were voluntary and I think um, for display purposes and, and that's okay. Um, volunteers come and go, but I think when you have this much money tied up into a commission that there needs to be some level of communication and accountability into what you're doing. We also furnished them with a list of other arts and culture commissions throughout the state that are highly producing in terms of various issues. Um, this commission didn't come close to meeting any of those benchmarks, despite having vast resources compared to the other ones. So we thought that that might be a good exercise for them to look at what some other commissions were doing. They weren't interested in that either. So it's unfortunate that it happened. Obviously, they could reapply. They would be welcomed back, I'm sure, by you. You are the appointing authority. But at this point, there are new people who are interested. I think that there are standards and accountability that need to be set in terms of the financial aspects of it. And there is equipment and other things that have been purchased that are now back into the hands of um, Jason Neely at the library as opposed to being kept in private homes, which is something else that I was uncomfortable with in terms of audit procedures. So just curious, again, so I saw some of the back and forth with, you know, again, talking about zoning regulations on murals, I mean, and putting them on private buildings. I mean, talking about accountability, why would we use taxpayer money to do anything on a private building? I mean, that should be private money if they want to do it. And then, and Honestly, I don't think it's your role to be talking about that zoning change. It's up to planning and zoning if they want to do it. Well, as Quite with, frankly. as and with, so, and then I'm sorry. And the other thing, I my understanding some of the back and forth of some of the members, someone reached out to a congressperson, and that sort of folks went after that person for reaching out to a congressperson. And I want to apologize to Jen because I think it's terrible what's going on. I, again, I, I think this is. It's, it feels like we're being heavy-handed on these commissions, in my opinion. And I'm not. I, we we do need accountability. But um, I don't know. Well, I don't, I don't think you can have it both ways. I mean, you either want accountability or you believe versions of stories that come here tonight that aren't necessarily true. But these are our true. residents, and they volunteered for years, and we should give them the benefit of the doubt. Well, nobody was asked to look up zoning regulations. Well, nobody was asked to look up zoning regulations. They were asked to contact muralists and see if there was any interest. And most murals are a combination of a public-private partnership and private and funds are raised. And they're pretty expensive, too. And you're talking about budget money. I mean, they're, they're not cheap. 
well, when you have thirty thousand dollars in your arts and culture. But, but again, that's that's for us to decide, not you. That's for us. We're the but we're the board of finance. Well, actually, it, it was okay, left uh, to the commission. Excuse me. P- point of order. Uh, let's let's move forward here. This is you know, uh, enough's enough. Okay. John, John All right, John, uh, Councillor Santanello. Thank you. Thank you. Um, look, I, I never thought that the Cultural Arts Commission would devolve into the January 6th commission. But I will tell you, I have been in every one of their meetings. This commission was not functioning. The story that you heard here tonight was not even true. It's not even, it's not even a close representation of what was going on. And Councilor Prisoner, I said this to you before privately, and I'm going to say it to you again. I'm a volunteer. Okay, and I work my butt off, and I know how, what kind of respect a volunteer deserves. I didn't get it from them, and that has nothing to do with it. We bought a band shell. My very first meeting, we bought a band shell, and I went to the Cultural Arts Commission with great news. We have a band shell. I would love you guys to take ownership of this and program this for the people of Enfield going forward. The response, we don't have the ability to do that. Who's going to do that? We're not doing that. That is not the kind of volunteers that we need. I'm sorry. And I gave Ms. McIntosh an opportunity to hold off until we could reconstitute this commission and give a clear set of expectations of what we wanted from them. How many of you, Council Ludwig, Mr. Mayor, Gina, you've been on this council for a while. Tell me how many cultural arts commission events you go to year after year. Can you name one? Can you name one, Mike? We've done the, the Opera House Players and we certainly... Uh, no. Cultural yeah. Arts Commission sponsored event. There's none. That's okay? not Opera That's House a problem. Right. I'm sorry. And there's a massive amount of taxpayer money, not massive, it's $30,000 of taxpayer money that was being hoarded in a bank account. It's not okay. It's not okay. So when you call them on it and make people responsible, that's the reaction I got. I asked for some time so that we could set this set of expectations. And what I got was, we quit. Okay, you quit. Done. And you know what? There's five other people who are more than enthusiastic to be on this commission, roll up their sleeves, and do things. I am not going to sit here and be and have what is being said about me floating around this town like I am this ogre. I am, I am holding people to the same level of accountability that I hold myself to in this chair. And if that bothers you guys, I don't really care. It's obnoxious for you to sit there and tell me that I have been disrespectful to them or imply it at all. I think you know me better than that. I'm sorry. So I'm going to tell you, I was going to be prepared to table this tonight to regroup. I'm not. I spoke with Mr. Dresick. I didn't speak with Mr. Dresick. I have spoken with him before. I am aware he wants a board of ed liaison. They are more than enthusiastic. I am trying to incorporate and bring people in. The schools have art communities. They have drama communities. They have music communities with kids and parents. We're bringing them into this group to make it more exciting for people of this town. And that's it. I'm done. Okay. Thank you, Councillor. Deputy Mayor Scala. Thank you. Um, I will be supporting this. I think it's a a phenomenal idea. I think it's unfortunate that members quit, um, and sometimes that happens. Um, I wish it happened a different way, but that it, it is what it is. I will indicate, though, that my understanding is that Chris Drezik said this was a good idea. Um, and whatever liaison the Board of Education chooses, that person will obviously only volunteer if they have the time to come to those meetings and liaise those meetings. They will be a non-voting member. Um, they don't get to dictate what happens, but they give a direct avenue and a pathway to our schools and the immense talent and the diverse culture um, that we have there. So I think this is a phenomenal idea and I will be supporting it. Okay, thank you. Mayor. Councilor Ongar. Uh, I just wanted to say that we have access to all these things without having a Board of Ed liaison member. I think that's adding another chef to the kitchen, and it's going to make things a little more complicated when we're trying to calm things down, smooth things out, regroup. We don't need it. We have access to all those things without it. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm just going to make one one comment in regard to this. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely in favor of it. Uh, this uh, Enfield Cultural Arts Commission uh, 
definitely needs to, to recharge and reorganize. We do thank the people that have spent you know a few years on this on this commission, um, and then we we, just, we will be moving forward with this. And as uh, Deputy Mayor Sakala stated, um, you know the Board of Ed uh, will be uh, have a liaison, uh, and as Councilor Sakala mentioned, the talent that they have at the high schools. I don't care if it's art, music, whatever. Cultural arts is uh, a, a very important uh, aspect to this town, and we really have to utilize it. Um, so that's my final comment under that, Sheila. Um, um, well, uh, Councilor Mangini, uh, then we're going to, after you, then we're going to uh, vote. Thank you. I'm a little um, disturbed that I was misinformed that um, Superintendent Drezek was not in favor when I've learned recently, very recently, that in fact he is in favor of a Board of Ed Liaison. So I don't take kindly to not being told the truth, number one. But more importantly, beyond that, I believe that it's important, again, I think it was John Santanella that just mentioned that we try and not only incorporate the Board of Ed, but uh, enhance uh, the uh, opportunities from our community. You know, we have the Halloween events, we have Family Day. There are many, many different events that I think that the schools uh, would and could and should be a part of. And I believe if they had a liaison, they would feel more comfortable participating in this um, cultural arts uh, endeavor. So again, I will be supporting this, but beyond all that, I'm disturbed that I was not told the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Sheila, roll call, please. Councillor Pisner. Against. Councillor Santanella. For. Councillor Ungeyer. Against. Deputy Mayor Sakala. For. Mayor Cursati. Four. Councillor Despard. Four. Councillor Finger. Four. Councillor Hopkins. Four. Councillor Ludwick. Against. Councillor Mangini. Four. That's seven in favor, three against, and no abstentions.